<laughs> Give oh, calm down, Jay. <laughs> oh no, I feel like I missed something. Uh, hello, everybody. Yeah. Um, I've clearly missed something, but we'll cover that afterwards. <laughs> hello, everybody. Okay. Um, hopefully by now you kind of know who we are. Uh, but maybe you don't. And if you don't, hi, I'm Matt. Um, I GM the lovely game that these lovely people um, crazily play in every week. Uh, Power Rangers Let There Be Thunder every Thursday at 1800 GMT, which translates into 1300 Eastern Time. And 10 a.m. Pacific. because It is 10 a.m. Pacific. I was just trying to do the maths again in my head. I was like, it's eight hours if I take eight away from six. Where do I go? Um, yeah, I can't do maths. Um, yeah, and very Why much are... like... Say again, sorry? Why are time zones? Why are time zones? Very much. Um... But yes, very much like a couple of weeks ago when we had Ad, had Ad, had Anne on the stream. I am joined here today by another one of the lovely players, and we're going to be discussing their character and how they were created, especially as, like, Anne, they joined a few sessions in. Would you like to introduce Indeedly. yourselves for the people that may not know you yes today i am only michael you are the only michael <laughs> we will take advantage my, of that my plan is complete I've <laughs> <laughs> he is gone there is only one <laughs> oh yeah i play sarah definitely fully well-adjusted young adult also a Black Ranger. The Chesney Hawks of Michael's the one and only. I was thinking <laughs> more um, there can be only one. Yeah, I was thinking, I don't, I don't know what a Chesney Hawks is. Is that a British thing? I am the one and only. I think that's it. Oh god, I might be getting old now. Um, moving swiftly on, because I'm slightly concerned about this. Um, yes, so <laughs> Michael plays the lovely Sarah, who is our Black Ranger. Um, and Sarah joined about... Five? Episode five? Yeah. I want to say five. Five episodes into the game. And it was a, I think it was quite an interesting introduction. <laughs> I liked the <laughs> end of the episode, personally. Um, mm -hmm. I like the fact that, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it, she still has the pistol. Oh, yeah. Um, Absolutely. And that poor NPC does keep popping up <laughs> every now and again. And apparently he's now that living guy. his best life. Exactly. He's living. Yeah. Everything happened for a reason. He is doing <laughs> very well. Um, apparently security guarding wasn't for him. Um, but I do believe that man... man was born... Yes, he was born to make coffee. And run a business. <laughs> and possibly learn hip-hop keto. <laughs> we shall see um, <laughs> but I believe that does mean you joined at level 2 yes yeah Tur turns out like level 1 would have been uh, weird <laughs> see the thing of coming into coming into games at higher levels even level 2 like when I went back and um reverse engineered those are the words i'm looking for 
a character sheet and I realized that I, I would have, I think I started with like a, like a one or two strength at level, level one. I was like, oh, all right, that happened. But, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, that was a decision. It's the thing that happened. Yeah. When you build a higher level. Yeah, I mean, everything ended up where I wanted it at level two. And I was like, all right, this is what I want. This is where I need it. It works and out. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. That's, that's also have a very unusual build for a Black Ranger. So, yes. Um, I like, though, that she's she's very much played up the performance. Um, I have got the character sheet open on Roll20 so people can see where she is. Um, she has got. A lot of ranks in performance. She's very yeah. good at the the singing. Um, <laughs> we have um, <laughs> our lovely Red Ranger in the chat, and yeah, um, and he did I mean, leave his car lost. open. I do remember yeah. it was unlocked. Yeah, somebody decided to you know put that out there and i was like all right that is yeah. that that's the car i'll steal all the car i'll steal <laughs> it was fate yeah this is how power rangers are made <laughs> by stealing cars and fighting putties <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very strange group um <laughs> yeah but tell us well, I mean, um, sorry go on yeah go ahead you were asking me a question. How Sarah came to be in your head? Well, I almost joined at level one. So I know I know Jay from other from another game, but I just did like at the moment the scheduling was just not. I was doing it. I I was doing a show. And it just didn't work out. And uh, when once every player started dropping like flies, I was like, and my time freed up. I would realize, okay, maybe I can make this work. And I built Sarah originally as a pink because that's where I initially envisioned her. And but I at that point I also I knew there wasn't a pink because I've been watching the show, but I didn't know that you had massive pink plans so <laughs> when we discussed that i very much had to go back to the drawing board and black ranger is an acceptable substitution as as far as leaning into like the social stuff versus blue not so much Definitely. so i made her made her a black ranger and like from from go, like you've known, then I wanted to shift to pink at some point. It's, so it's definitely yeah. come up once or twice. Yeah, once or um, twice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's definitely basically been kind of wedged into my notes with some exclamation <laughs> marks, um, a little <laughs> circle around it, and highlighted just to make sure that I didn't forget. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, and I do also think that sort of this way makes it a little more a more interesting story beat. But I was able to throw in that that uh, tie with Kim into her background. Yeah, and then yeah, the redemption of Kim and the transfer of power will be interesting when we get there. Um, and there's been a few a few good moments along the way. Um, Kim's not shown up very often so far um, but when she has I think it's been particularly impactful yeah um, <laughs> yeah yeah when when Jay approached me and said about doing the Halloween episode it's like you could he said to me like you can play a character and I was like I'm going to play Kim as the Pink Ranger. Because <laughs> of all of the emotional impact that that could create for so many characters. 
Um, yeah. I'm cruel. Then we we immediately we immediately name drop Q. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which instantly was just like Q circle highlight exclamation marks. Um, yep. That went into my notes as well. Um, it was part of the plan was um, hopefully somebody would get revealed and it would play into the the whole Ranger Slayer concept. Now she mm. knows who the Rangers are and she's coming for them. She gets one out of five. Um, <laughs> for now. That's so yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, she she's built as a pink in black clothing. That's why I Very started much. with that D four, D four and targeting, and I fully expected targeting to be my attack stat, but somebody decided to throw me for a loop and give me an a an a scream a stick. <laughs> I'm, I am here for. Don't get me wrong. Um, slight curveball. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, mean, I, I kind of percent off. I looked at your character. Um, Sarah was very much a performer. She was very much a singer, and interestingly, on the Renegade Games Studio Discord, we'd been discussing um, different skills for different types of weapons, and somebody at the time had been mentioning a, I want to say, a saxophone as a weapon, and we were like, yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember that, like, yeah. You know, and then when I saw <laughs> kind of Sarah and her performance and how much music kind of meant to her, I was like, how about this? And <laughs> you rolled with it. So. Well, I mean, it's hard not to. I mean, D, was, at that point, it would have been like D6 and specialization out the gate. I'm like, uh, yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> Everyone yeah. has a little bit of power in them, and you, you fed it. So. <laughs> um, you know, I like to. <laughs> it just it just it just worked and it was it was a strange idea and I kind of wanted to see where it would go um and the a scream uh puns have been funny <laughs> it may have taken me a little while to get the s c r e a m part of it I'm not going to lie um <laughs> But they've been worth it, um, and they've also fed into some progression conversations we've had. So it's been quite interesting yes. to sort of see where that may take Sarah later. Exactly. We're on the road to full black canary. Yes. Or pink <laughs> canary. <laughs> um <laughs> So we right, had I mean. a very low strength. We had a nice speed and social yeah. um, to start yeah, off with. I have a thing. Yeah. This, open this. So level one would have been, yeah, strength one. Or it would have been strength two uh, with, with a point in might because of Black Ranger and then a point in athletics. And then four speed, which I put uh, acrobatics, initiative, and two in targeting. <laughs> if I had known at the time how heavily and readily available we were going to be relying on um, follow me, that's the one, I probably wouldn't have put that point into initiative, but I wanted it there just in case we ever got caught without a Red Ranger. 
So, which we have once or twice. You have. And who knows? It's entirely possible it may happen again. Some cruel, cruel gonna... twist of fate. But <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. don't know who. I don't know who makes this story up. They'd have to do something <laughs> really mean. <laughs> he may be in space. Yeah. Um. Who knows? <laughs> he may join the astronaut Probably. off to the moon. Exactly. <laughs> To um, the moon, Alice. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I had a three in smarts with alertness, culture, and technology. And then she ended up with uh, six social at level one. Uh, two performance from Black Ranger. Two more performance of Persuasion and the Streetwise. And then uh, I t my origin there is the correct phrasing terminology i took tragic because she has had a bit of a hard knock life and i used that for one more speed point which i put into infiltration because we may or may not have noticed she is an actual criminal she has a slightly shady past and mm -hmm. Dislike of Angel Grove's um, police department, even the lovely Balkan Skull. It's not just Angel Grove. <laughs> no, even the space police. Um, yeah, yeah, just a whole thing. Kruger um, gives up. Kruger makes her very uncomfortable. Yes, that's fair though. He's a very <laughs> menacing-looking individual. <laughs> And see, uh, as far as influences, I mean, obviously, artisan with a focus on uh, music. I took Nomad because she has been repeatedly uprooted and f forced around the country a bit. Thank you, American foster care system. And a good old dash of checkered past. Because, yeah. again, actual criminal. <laughs> then she, She's doing well now, though. Now, yeah, but... I took for for hang ups I went with the nomad and the checkered past hang up. So yeah. She's very leery of people, typically, unless they're Kelsey and just get under your skin in like three seconds or less. Yep. Kelsey Kelsey kinda of wormed her way in pretty quickly. Yep. Like even and like in the I'm trying to remember in the in my premiere episode even I was very standoffish with but with Peter with uh, Q Jesus that's his name wow it's early it's very and early like, for Michael and, and it, very late for me yeah. <laughs> and it didn't help that they were being weird and running around and this <laughs> because <and like, laughs> that, that was the episode where it was like putty attack five minutes later putty attack putty attack putty attack, yep. putty attack. And it was just like these these idiots just keep running off into the bathroom and disappearing and i'm like what is happening <laughs> so yep. they were super sus and like she she got interested into why they were so sus like what is wrong with these people what is happening right now like <laughs> and eventually it became either the either either they're in a cult or they're power rangers or some combination thereof and even her first introduction 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 to <laughs> peter which was uh at the juice bar he was going to be giving her the tour um 
was basically like, don't let this kid near like lasers, anything explosive, maybe like nothing <laughs> sharp. Um, exactly. Yeah. Immediately <laughs> like, oh no, my my guide is going to blow me up. That's it wasn't great. a good start, really, for poor Sarah. No. Um, yeah, I can can fully see that Nomad's hang-up sort of coming through in that first episode. Um, and yeah, and I, I need to remember the bone, the Nomad bonus, because I'm I keep playing the hang-up, but I keep forgetting that I have. <laughs> Uh, edge on insight checks. I've rolled so many insight checks without it because it just I just forgot about it. <laughs> but definitely, I can definitely remember the hangups. So I guess yes. that's good. <laughs> you get the uh, edge on information on cities you've been to. I want to say. Mm hmm. Which is. The less useful part of that one. It's more the. Like edge on insight and social shenanigans yep. for figures for sussing people out. <laughs> Which is very useful. Um, there's been a surprising amount of insight checks, but directed at <laughs> each other. Um, there's been a surprising <laughs> amount of insight checks directed at other characters. Um, not even non-player characters, other player characters. It's been quite interesting. We do a lot of things. You do do a lot of things. There's been a lot of secrets. Uh, yeah. Should I? I mean, they're visible on the screen, probably. If I, or well, they are the visible on the screen, but we did have the bond. the nomad yeah. bond. Yeah. And so um, yeah, yeah. With uh, yeah. sort of the nomad bond, uh, we did also have the fact that Sarah had her brother as well. Who yes. she hadn't seen yeah. because they were placed in different foster care, and unfortunately, kind of got shifted away from one another, as the system sometimes does. And yeah, it's only very recently, realistically, in universe that they've tied back up. And yeah, small world it is. Right. Very small. I did not expect that that quick of a turnaround. I was not prepared. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Um, <laughs> we. I'm 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 gonna throw it out there anyway, just in case. But yeah, um, it turns out that Sarah's brother is um working with emigrant tech who is currently working over at the lightspeed aqua base so during their chase scene with the soon to be titanium ranger sarah was having a merry little jaunt running after him and she was doing very well very very well and just to throw in a bit of a speed bump, um, here was a, yeah, here was one I prepared earlier. <laughs> As she <laughs> comes running around, running, 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 it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I very much almost stopped right there. I almost stopped and just ignored Ryan. It was very close. My cunning plan. <laughs> but I do think that it worked out better than if I had. Like, actually, like, the, the way it happened is better. 
like a walking into that cafe. Reunion. Yeah. yeah. And it's been nice to have him pop up in a couple of episodes yeah. so far. Just... just taking off her helmet willy nilly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Sarah. And that, that's the thing that wasn't, I didn't initially have any plan of her being the one to constantly be like revealing her identity. It's just happened. <laughs> Like, she has no real attachment to a secret identity because she doesn't have anyone to be concerned about. And Zordon is a stuffy old fuddy-duddy and his rules are largely outdated and useless. So, (laughs) (laughs) like, (laughs) you know... There's going to be a very interesting conversation when they come face to face in person. Exactly. Like, you know, the the whole never escalate rule. Like, listen, buddy, sometimes you got to throw the first punch. (laughs) I I don't think throwing the first punch is an issue. (laughs) Um, You know, like if you get the drop, if you get the drop on Goldar and you want to throw the first punch, that go for it. A hundred percent. You take it. If you get the drop on Goldar and you decide to call the Megazord down to stomp on him, <laughs> that's when Zordon has a bit of an issue. <laughs> um. Yeah. But I, of course, very much built her with her all of those things in mind, like, you know, she was a street kid on and off and like was before she got thrown in the slammer, she spent, she was on the streets of LA doing, doing crimes and things. So, I mean, she needed to be able to handle that sort of extracurricular activity. (laughs) So the infiltration, the athletics, uh, the acrobatics a little bit, but that, that also plays into her her uh, connecting with Kim through the that little pilot program the Juvie Center had, you know, and then just three wise of course, and then just boatloads of performance because performance. Yeah, uh, it was what she yeah. loved to do the singing. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't want it. sort of as she progressed. Yeah. yeah I, say, I don't want to deep dive into her full background too much, because not everything has necessarily been revealed. But, I mean, a lot of it kind of has. No. At least I, I veneered a lot of it in the conversation she finally had with Wyatt. We, went, we just kind of glazed over, like, an overview. Uh, at level two, finally, I put, I put a point in conditioning because, <laughs> yeah, that and that would have been that's where I started. Extra health, yeah, yes, very important for anybody um, joining yeah. us who hasn't played any games yet. <laughs> um, oh, you don't get health when you level. Yeah. At the moment, realistically, the only way to gain health is by putting points into conditioning. Yep. So, conditioning is a very useful skill. Especially if... Well, it's, not, it's not in my case. I I started with two, with Tragic. But if you're playing a character with one from your origin... Conditioning. <laughs> Do it. Yes. Screw um, your concept, put a point in conditioning. Yeah, free <laughs> free health would be the um, free health would be my personal recommended minimum. If you're fighting a foot soldier like a putty, and they manage to get a critical hit on you, that's two damage potentially that 
otherwise right. you could have been floored by. Yeah. If you're so if you're playing a full shooty and you're smart about it, you could probably get away with two health. Potentially yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah, if you're if you're up front. But yeah. But yeah, see, it does become a bit of a balancing game between, um, especially if you're a strength-reliant character, using might a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then you can kind of uh, factor in things like supercharged essence for strength to bump up things like might and athletics and brawn. It is Not true. conditioning, unfortunately. There are not enough points but it'll help a bit. for health if you're a bunch of character, Jay. That is very correct. It is. No. Like, like on, if I were building... That's the thing. If I wanted to build a melee character, I would use finesse and then use my strength points for conditioning. Like, it just... You can make it work with might, but it's so much easier to go finesse conditioning. And you're good. You're set. And... You just have to use a finesse weapon. Oh darn! Everything everything does one or two damage anyway. You'll be all right. Yep. Um. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. I I I can't say it any better. Yeah. Um. I've I've spoken to people recently about characters. Um. People who've sort of like. This is this is my character, and they're getting flawed a little bit too quickly. And they've put loads of points into like might, and no points into conditioning. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Right. Well, and it also yeah, you know, going finesse lets you you actually take defender at some point, which is just stupid good, but requires a finesse weapon, which drives me mad. <laughs> I love this perk. I hate the prerequisites. I have to say, just if anybody out there is um, looking at a White Ranger, Defender, White Ranger. And when it comes out, Gold with Defender? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can already take damage if they're adjacent. Mm-hmm. Being able to potentially mitigate the attack and then yeah. take the damage if they weren't able to. Yeah, extended tanky tankiness, absolutely. Oh yeah. In fact, I think when gold comes out, I will be building a character on stream for the Gold Ranger, just because I'm going to be excited, <laughs> like a little five year old. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and I, I assume gold will be, like, a finesse weapon. Like, because, I mean, slightly off topic, but the Zeo, like, the, the gold Zeo staff or whatever it's called, is a finesse weapon. So, our our current example of a gold ranger weapon is finesse, which, unless Brian went wildly off course from that basic idea, <laughs> We'd have to uh yeah. hey none of that fancy yellow <laughs> fancy fancy Um But yeah uh let's Hello Nova. Hello Nova Um so when you were leveling Sarah up, did you have a plan? A plan? No. I unlike Anne, I did not have a particular plan in mind. Other than someday going. I love pink. the way you said that. It's just a plan. <laughs> <laughs> I I honestly like when I make characters, I typically don't have like an overarching plan. Like I'll be like, I want to take this thing at some point, maybe. But it's very much uh a- as it comes, like I-, I hadn't like 
Um, so we'll skip third level a little bit. I just I threw a point into alertness at third level because more alertness, more insight. I just you know, I will. I didn't have enough points to start with a D4 and alertness because I needed the culture and the technology for music stuff. So that's the D2, D2, D2 spread at level one. So point alertness at level three and then level four yeah, for your general perk time. I hemmed and hawed a lot because I honestly didn't know what I wanted to tank here. Yeah, I like... Because I, I did end up going, I threw a point of targeting, which let me qualify for Sharpshooter's Grace, which is just a ridiculous perk. <laughs> but it's a very popular one for people who are shooting stuff. Yeah, it, it's yeah. <laughs> and I, for a while there, I wasn't sure I was going to take that. I was looking at other things because it was like, will. I wasn't sure if it would work with my stick and using performance, but it does literally say ranged attack, a targeting attack. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, sharp shooter's grace. Yep. Takes, and it could take a, uh, a mediocre range combatant into a very good range combatant just immediately. Like Although you have to be you have to be with with that prerequisite that never mind, I didn't say that. Because requiring a D six in targeting throws you means you're you're it jumps you to a D ten. <laughs> like specialization or no specialization. That's insane. It makes you pretty good at, yeah. at the uh, the shooting yeah. thing. Or the range thing. Because in theory, you could use it with athletics for throwing like a javelin. Yeah. Uh, you can throw um, things with finesse. You can throw daggers. Yeah. It's There's, there's different bits in there. It's... Okay. It's a very useful perk. One of the most useful. Um, like I was looking at... If you want to go all the way with... Sorry, Michael. If you want to go like pot loads of points into that targeting or something, then fair enough. But that does free up some extra skill points to go somewhere else as well. True. I'm going to say something along those lines, yeah. You can get your specialization easier. So you don't need to put it in the actual die you get two effectively from yeah. from the perk so you can take your specialization and make yourself even more effective that way uh, and fifth level was obviously another another performance <laughs> because i think until i max it out Unless I get a very good reason, like, story-wise, to take something else in social, I'm just going to keep dumping performance. Because it's, like, the thing she does. And it's, um, it's becoming <clears throat> ever more important. Mm -hmm. I think I would be... Hopefully not crossing a line to say that the the thing you've disliked the most about black is the lack of things to do with uh, power points. Personal power, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think I've been vocal enough about that. that is, there's no line crossing there. Yeah, black is very um, cool spectrum and has a lot of interesting things, but the not having anything to do with your personal power until you either use your very limited grid power slots on something or get to level like 11 and then you get something you could that's all also only usable once per day so yeah <laughs> sorry brian i hate it <laughs> 
but we did so there's a few things on the sheet that oh no only one thing on the sheet that is unfamiliar it's not in the book it's not in any book <laughs> um and anybody that has been watching there was an arc where our lovely red ranger essentially was in space with the Omega Rangers. Partially because the player of the lovely Red Ranger was off doing really cool stuff. And definitely not rubbing it in every week or so. Yeah. When he joined. Exactly. Um, yeah. Definitely not popping in. He'd, he'd video in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, he did go to space. Chat. Yes, he definitely did go to space. It was completely, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't know. <laughs> um, but we we did something with the Zeo crystals. Um, and when he came back, it kind of gave the team a bit of a power up. And each of them got a grid power, essentially, that I developed for their character uniquely to emphasize something they could do. So for Sarah, it was her performance skill. And also something they were lacking in. Yeah. So again, for Sarah, it was something that used her power points and gave her kind of like crowd control yes and it's been very helpful and i especially enjoy that i can use it unmorphed as we yes anyone who saw the most recent episode would know <laughs> um so essentially with with uh sarah's it's called lesser roar of the guardian lion it takes the place of an attack. She rolls her performance skill dice to determine how many targets within a 20-foot radius can be affected, which is one of the reasons why having her performance so high is very useful. Yeah. Um... And then she makes a performance check against their willpower. It doesn't do an awful lot of damage at the moment. Not that that was a hint. Um, <laughs> well, it's more about... But it is stun damage. Yeah. And can impose the stunned condition on a critical hit which is very supportive of the team as well, or for the team. Because stunned is a nice condition to impose upon an enemy. Yeah, absolutely. And I used that twice last session? Yes, yeah, because I have two power left right now, going into a fight with Goldie Pants. <laughs> Unmorphed because someone's a jerk. This is my innocent. <laughs> this is my innocent face. <laughs> um, but it gave her something to use her personal power on. I am very, very um, happy with this grid power. If I hadn't stated that, I enough. am glad. <laughs> like, it's also a little benefit that with extra attack. I could do it twice if I wanted to, or I can do it and uh, punch someone or something. Which I mm -hmm. do believe I did that last game. Like I did a thing, did it, and then I like did another thing. And if they're stunned, edge here's an edge on your attack. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited. It's a nice little combo moves that she can pull off. Yeah. I'm excited to see the evolution. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> level six, which w- I put a point into athletics, and I, I flirted with putting it into conditioning for a bit because conditioning most important skill in the game. But she's been working so much with Kelsey, getting getting ready for Ninja Warrior. That I was like, I need I need the athletics, and it makes too much story sense to not put it. So and we now have a D four in athletics. Which is fantastic because athletics, jumping. Yes, also for jumping. <laughs> it's morphing time, triple in that jump distance. Yes, because I did not use my grid power slot like some people to take super leap. <laughs> I can't remember who took that. Panic. Yes, <laughs> 90 foot leap, just wee. <laughs> Exactly. No, I ended up going yeah. with Power Strike. Like, not... Which is another cool way to spend yeah. power points. And. Oh, do, do we. Have you got any notes there on your Lion Zord? I don't have anything. I I haven't put anything into roll twenty. That's okay. Do we? What? I, I mean, I'm I asking have, you a question. Okay, again. yeah. I have. I'm like. I. It's got the like the basic stats on it, but as far. Do we want to spoil? Sure. Uh, yeah. My zord. 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 One thing I didn't open was my zord. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah. What is this game? Power Rangers. Black Lion Thunder Zord. Okay. Yeah, so, Zord! <clears throat> like, like everyone, we all have Thunder, we have Marshall. Uh, the... The important thing is, it was sixth level. You get your first real custom. Well, fifth level, you get it. You get a thing, but which initially I had put that into a uh, upshift for my for drive while using the Zord. That has since changed because of this upgrade. <laughs> I now have we homebrewed a. Zord upgrade called Harmonic Connection, which lets me use performance instead of driving. With so I I went from probably the worst Zord pilot to probably the best Zord pilot with one simple perk, which is gonna suck for me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, here's me running a, a, a Zord fight for the first time in ages, and I'm like, we're going to do a little introduction, just a reminder. And it's like, pow, pow. Critical hit, critical hit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I, I moved I moved that fifth level upgrade uh, from the driving shift, because I don't need it anymore. My driving, my, my piloting is now absurd. I moved it into a uh, damage boost for the lion's roar. So it'll do four energy now instead of three. So when I do crit, it's it's, it's even worse. But yes, because of um, all of these insane upshifts <laughs> and things that I have, uh, I, I, I've given myself like little notes on my, my personal PDF for how to how to zord <laughs> because we i can accidentally hit 3d6 without trying very hard Especially we right. definitely when we when we sat down and had that conversation about building zords there was a definite kind of nobody really had many ranks in driving 
other than Peter, who basically was like, oh, I'm going to be able to control that dragon sword. Um, <laughs> so we really picked features, the automatic sword features that would really benefit controlling the Zord. Um, it, it try, trying to make everyone um, at least competent your Zord. Yeah. <laughs> but what that has meant is that while people have been sort of levelling it up and kind of got in their understanding of the system a bit better and kind of where to take their characters they've had that kind of crutch to lean on mm -hmm. with the upshifts um, which I think has been really useful yes it's made sword fighting feel like a nice progression in combat you've been having like a normal level fight and you've got into a Zord and still been able to do decent skill checks and more damage um. and like before this I had been very uh, melee with the Lion Zord because Martial Zord has, is, is an upshift in melee so <laughs> I'd always been trying to generally close and get up, get up there, because it was, it was generally more effective, especially with the Lion Zord having uh, seven health and a twenty toughness. Like getting getting up there and tank, like sort of the opposite of Sarah on the ground. She's very, she's always been very back and shooty, versus the Zord is very in your face. But now, that has changed. <laughs> we are in a whole different ballgame now. A hundred percent. This next Zord fight, when we have, when we fight, when we get around to it, is going to be, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> they haven't really played with this yet. I will be bringing you a Zord fight very soon. Not next episode, but very soon. Um... Yeah, very soon. And, I mean, there could be some changes coming as well. <laughs> we've we've discussed kind of off camera what, that we're in the second season. We're like 26 episodes in now. Overall, I can't remember yeah, if it's sounds... 26 on Thursday coming, I think. I need to check this. Because <laughs> I started numbering them season 2, episode 1, instead of episode 23, yeah. episode 24, episode... So it's thrown me. But we... We're further in than me lacking kind of the confidence thought we'd get. Um... But it's been nice to sort of have the conversations with the people and see where they see their characters going and where the show can go. Mm -hmm. 25 on Thursday coming or 25 on Thursday just gone? Yeah, way to be vague, Jay. Nope, 26. My notes lied. <laughs> but which Thursday? Yeah. Which Thursday? <laughs> 26 on... So I was right. Was I right? I've already forgotten what I said. Um, so we, we just did 25. We just did 25. Which is kind of big. Yeah. It's kind of big. Um, it's, a, it's a milestone number. It is a milestone. Like, yeah. Um, in comic book. You get issue twenty five, they charge at least a dollar more. <laughs> um, I've dropped hints as well. It's been quite interesting dropping hints about where season three is going in game. Um, 
and I think people have been picking up on hints um, more and more recently. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if anybody in the audience has been picking up on them as well. Um, but I will say, if you have, and you go back and you realise that the first one I dropped was like way back in like episode eight or nine um yep i'm just throwing it out there it's been there for a while lurking in the background um yep it's gonna be interesting to see how that's gonna change characters how that's gonna change zords potentially maybe different automatic zord features um how it's going to change weapons um yeah we've still got a lot of surprises and a lot of fun things coming it's exciting i'm ready to steal a spaceship <laughs> I love that's how we, yes, I love that's where your mind goes. I'm ready to steal a space a spaceship. Um <laughs> I have to say, uh when when Q kind of went, you're not going to space, I was like where, where, where's he going with this? That would have to be at least three times bigger than oh no, not a Zoolander reference. <laughs> oh. Um, but yes, Sarah has become, don't tell Peter, or Q, but Sarah <laughs> has become one of my favourite characters, because she's so unorthodox, <laughs> um, she does kind of... <laughs> take her helmet off all willy-nilly it's just like <laughs> quiet Kim <laughs> Bob <laughs> it's like who Seth else <laughs> um, about to just morph in front of Goldar and who knows yeah, how many other people like, um, and I think one of the things that's been very interesting is that she's so untraditional in terms of mechanics as well like relying on performance instead of might for example has been mm. or or targeting you know she can go from doing a gig with her band to screaming out of her as screamer stick <laughs> at parties <laughs> without batting an eyelid. It's just been a very interesting development that I am here to see more of. And hopefully yeah. Jay isn't going to beat me after that little big bold. <laughs> um, <laughs> love you. I, I am thinking she's definitely going to consider actually carrying that pistol around now. <gasps> Dun dun dun. <laughs> well, I mean, you threw putties at us in an unmorphed, in, in a situation where we didn't have time to morph. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I Ten might need. I might technically need. Tenga. Technically, Tenga. Technically, Tenga. Silly microphone. Um, but hey, you're the Power Rangers. <laughs> um, I figured I had to get one fight where you couldn't morph straight away. Oh, no, it, it makes sense, but like immediately <laughs> yeah. in her mind, it's just like, Oh, this is a thing that can happen. I need to be prepared. I have a gun. Oh, no. <laughs> and like, I I, st I still had the question of like, will will conventional firearms affect these kind of monsters? And then when the security person shot the tanga and it worked, I was like, question answered. And that's <laughs> it. Like, okay might be time to start packing <laughs> Jay 
help me. <laughs> um, not a direction no. I saw her going, but one that makes sense, scarily. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think we were joking recently because we've got uh, panic going away soon about a prison break. Um, <laughs> Maybe it's not panic, they're breaking out of prison. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, Maybe. Who knows? But, yeah. Um, is there anything else you wanted to sort of throw out there about Sarah? Is there anybody in the chat that has any yeah. questions yeah. for Michael yeah. about Sarah? Because, yeah, without getting spoilerific... That's pretty much an overview. Other than her mysterious accident down the stairs, apparently. <laughs> I see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly concerning. Ooh. Preferred song style. Um, it's becoming punk pop. Like, uh, she, her, her initial influences were very, uh, would have been very like blues and country heavy being in the South, being, spending a lot of time in New Orleans. But as she's been introduced to like more and more music and a wider realm, uh, and knowing, and, and it goes along with her aesthetic a little bit, like she's kind of a, um, visually, it uh bubblegum goth i guess yeah it's not the one it's not, not the term I, I i've i've been using but it works very like she got the, the black and the pink and the her her uh clothing style is very much very very much in that vein so very uh a lot like very Avril Lavigne kind of in that vein, with the occasional dip back into blues and thing, blues and country. Uh, we have um, a panda in the room. We do. Uh, what else do no. we have? On a scale from one to ten, how hot is Kyle? Oh, well, considering that we have agreed to base Kyle on a young Ryan Reynolds. Thirteen, like yeah, uh, I would. It's Ryan yeah. Reynolds. Like, speaking as a straight man, Ryan Ryan Reynolds is hot. So, yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we've got Kyle is a young Ryan Reynolds, um, and that's not because an older Ryan Reynolds isn't hot, but because they're sort of twenty year old characters, you know. Yeah. So we're having a younger Ryan Reynolds, um. And it's just like we're having um, Jason <laughs> Jr. You, is going to be a younger Jake Gyllenhaal again. Uh, apparently, we're all about yeah. eye candy. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. What's your favorite favorite Sarah moment to role play so far? Uh hard there have been so many good moments the i i i've fully teared up multiple times like the why the wyatt stuff but i i mean i think it's probably probably the amnesiac kim it's probably the best moment so far like once i finally got in there because my stupid roles but there 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 have been too many good moments to be able to definitively pick one but that's definitely, definitely up there. Someone's good at their job. I have to say, my, probably my favorite, I know the question wasn't asked to me, but I'm going to say anyway, the earliest one um, was when she kind of springboarded off of Peter, the yes. Green Ranger, that, and that, was just that, like, that, excuse that. me, Pete, in yeah. her very polite, very southern accent um just slayed me 
Um, it was just so like, yes, I know who you are. Um, please just get out of my way while I go fight these things. <laughs> yeah, it was just hey, I loved it. Part me while I do your job for you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Um, it. It was very good. Yeah. Charismatic Panda said, "Is Sarah kind of a music snob? Are there genres that she doesn't like from the get-go?" I want to say no. Like, there's a lot that she hasn't been exposed to, but I don't think she's come across anything that she's immediately been turned off by. She, I mean, she is effectively a prodigy with like between the the edge from the influence and just such a high skill. So like, she has like she has like an innate musical understanding. Like even if she doesn't let necessarily like the lyrics or something, there's probably something in any given song or genre that has some sort of positive use or something like. She's very much a music major. She's de- I would say she's definitely taking music theory classes. So finding that it's all about finding that that thing in a genre that makes the genre worthwhile. I like that. As somebody who has a very eclectic taste in music, um I fully agree yeah. with that statement. There's something in everything. Um, I have jazz, uh, blues, heavy metal, a bit of... um, I do like Pink, Avril Lavigne, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can pretty much find me listening to anybody. Um, Yeah, Yeah, mine, mine, mine is very, like, wild, too. With I I do enjoy a lot of pop punk, so that is definitely influencing. I and you know, I am an '80s baby, so I you can probably see that reflected in my song choices, especially the first few for Sarah's Zord when it shows up. Which I still need to actually go back and like figure those out, and make a list, so I don't repeat. <laughs> and also add them to the playlist. Uh, look. Any more questions from the chat? Just gonna quick <laughs> Confused. I do look, yeah. Kion, I can't pronounce confused or confused. <laughs> Just the Q puns. There's always a coupons or a coupon. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, if there are no further questions from the chat, I personally don't have any further questions for Michael, um, who's had to listen to me for long enough. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any questions for myself. No. So. <laughs> well then. Other than what am I doing in my life? But you know. Yeah. The big ones. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for this lovely deep dive into Sarah, her creation, her origins, how she's developed, where she's going, and her lovely performing arts um we will see you thursday for another episode of power rangers let there be thunder and i will be here on tuesday because i've figured out the internet issue and i will be (laughs) finally building that zord for the red ranger we built in chat um, I've forgotten his name. Joseph McKinley. Um, yes, this episode will be available as a video on demand on Twitch, 
and it will be uploaded onto the YouTube channel um, in approximately 24 hours. So thank you very much, everybody, for your lovely questions and for joining us. I hope you all have a lovely day. If you're watching the Super Bowl, enjoy. Sports ball. Whee! The sports ball. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, as Blue Stripe Leader says, because I'm terrible at this sort of thing. Yes. Like, Lord. share, subscribe, tell your friends. Do tell Goldar. He has a fantastic social media presence. Um, and, and he's terrifying enough to just make people watch. Exactly. And throw them like, down. You don't throw argue with him. Ass. He is a fully yeah. decked out in armor, like yeah. seven foot Lucky tall. Guy. I'm not quite sure what he is, but he's Terrifying pretty scary. Looking. Looking yeah. See you all Tuesday, maybe Thursday. Have a great guy. Have a great week, people. Bye. Bye.